All right, man, other 1 o'clock games. Big one here, New Orleans, New Orleans Saints at the Tampa Bay Bucks. Bucks favored by 2.5 against the Saints. Speaking of teams that are trending in certain directions, the Bucks really finding their way the last couple weeks. Um, impressive offensive performances against the Packers, mm-hmm. but also against the Jags last week. Baker Mayfield, I mean, if you want to use the two-week splits, Baker Mayfield's QB2 <laughs> the last couple weeks because I'm still on that page. Um, six touchdowns, no picks, over 10 yards per attempt, passer rating of 141 over these last couple weeks because he had that perfect passer rating, you know, against Green Bay. Um, but the Bucks' offense seems to be finding their way. Defense has been tough, I think, for most of the season anyway. Um, going up against the Saints, and the X factor here is the Saints in Tampa Bay the last couple of years, and the Brady era in particular, always played well in Tampa. You got Mike Evans and Mar- Marshawn Lattimore storyline. That's always fun. Yeah, always. Um, can Baker in the in the Bucks? Look, the Bucks beat the Saints in in Tampa Bay last year. Um, took remember Brady had all those like they would just sleepwalk for three three quarters and then make this ridiculous comeback. It was something like sixteen to three with seven minutes left or whatever mm-hmm. last year. Five minutes left, and the Bucks won. So the Bucks kind of got the monkey off their back beating New Orleans in Tampa Bay, but it's been a thing these last couple of years. And they won handily the first game earlier And in the year. first game in the Dome, the Bucks took it to them. So it could be a whole different thing. Um, but a three-point game, Vegas is expecting you know a, a hard-fought division battle here. Yeah, I mean, this is it for the Saints, right? Like, this was the team, this was where they were supposed to be. Like, they were supposed to be the team, albeit with fairly pathetic control over the division, but the team that was going to win this division with Derek Carr being just good enough to take you to the postseason and probably not much further. Uh, and now they now it's not working out. Tampa Bay has seized control of this division with a couple of wins against the division, Carolina and Atlanta, and then those games against uh, Green Bay and Jacksonville. They're on a four-game win streak now, which has propelled them to that 8-7 and seven record, which in the NFC South makes you some kind of god as a team. Um, so it's, you know, it's the team that they were supposed to be versus the team that they actually are. And if the Saints want anything out of this year, they have to show up and have their biggest performance of the year against this Tampa Bay team, which is surging, but against some pretty weak opposition. Is Lattimore even available? He's out, isn't he? Come on. You don't get to see Mike Evans versus Lattimore? No, he's on IR. Boo. As of two days ago. Uh, well, he's still been, he's been on IR, but he's not. Uh, Dennis Allen is non-committal, non-committal about Lattimore, and it seems like he won't return to uh, practice this week, which is always sad. Yeah. So Mike Evans is cooking. You know that would really test things. Evans has had some success against Lattimore. Like he'll have a few catches. Yeah, in I mean, that, in that first matchup, remember it was like they were going after it. Evans yeah. took it to Lattimore. They always do. I mean, what makes that matchup fun is that those guys just get hyper physical and yeah. go to war. To be, I mean, obviously Lattimore is the, the best version of that because we've seen it year after year after year. But all those Saints corners play the same kind of way. I mean, even without Lattimore, that, how they defend Mike Evans is something to watch in this game because all of the Saints corners get physical. Paulson Adebo, um, you know, Isaac Yadam, like all of the guys they have get in your face, cause problems, get physical, turn it into a fight. And as long as you have an officiating crew that's willing to work with you, that becomes fun. So the Bucks have a chance. They can clinch the NFC South with a win um, and an Atlanta loss. But if they win this, they, the path, it goes through Tampa Bay either way. Their, their last two weeks, winning the last two weeks has been huge for the Bucks to put them in this position. For the Saints to win the South, they have to win this game. Then they have to beat Atlanta. I think it's Atlanta in Week 18. And then might still need the Bucks to lose to the Panthers next week as well so the saints would need a lot of help but it all starts here if the saints can pull the upset in tampa bay two and a half point underdogs um again saints offensive line has had issues and they've just been so inconsistent offensively with Derek carr under center um every time the saints show signs of life they seem to um just lay an egg yeah and come back down to earth so season's on the line can they do anything here? Uh, last time we saw them, really struggled against the Rams on Thursday night football. Tried to make a little bit of a comeback. Again, why was I so optimistic about the Saints? It was a bad schedule and playmakers. I, all season, I was like, hey, Derek Carr's not great. He's not bad. He's mid-tier quarterback. Mid-tier quarterback with dudes who get open down the field. That should create some explosive offense. Like The raw stats are kind of there for Carr. 
but there's just something missing all season for the Saints team. So Tampa Bay's defense has been better in recent weeks as well. Now, again, you look at the competition, you're like, how much of that is who they were playing versus actually the Bucks defense is on an upturn. Um, but that, like, the Bucks defense should have been better than it has been for a lot of the season. Um, and I think Todd Bowles has taken a lot of criticism because it hasn't been. This is another game where, like, if you want that to continue, that the defense needs to show up and all its best players fire and all those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, like I said, Tamp- in, in Tampa's offense, is like, they're just they're playing better overall. They're still only averaging 18 points a game at home this year, Tampa Bay. Um, but recent trends, if they matter, they're playing well, averaging 31 po- points per game over the last three weeks, the Bucks. So two-and-a-half-point favorites, Tampa Bay. Where are you going with this one? Uh, I'm going with the Bucks. I am too. Now, um, are you you going to come back on the Baker bandwagon? No. No, no. Why? Why? I said I wouldn't. He's playing well. Set him out. He's playing well. He's playing pretty well. I'm still, I'm still out. I'm not, I'm not buying back. I'm not getting sucked back into the Baker Mayfield thing. I'm not. No. I've learned. It's over. This is the challenge. I did so many radio hits probably two, two and a half years ago, whatever the time period was, when Baker was – they didn't pick up his fifth-year option in Cleveland and let him go. Mm-hmm. And it was like Seattle needed a quarterback in Pittsburgh. And I go on all these radio hits, and I'm like, of course you should take a flyer on Baker Mayfield. Of course you should. Yeah. And then it looked like an idiot, <laughs> right? Because the Panthers did, and he goes to the Rams, and he's just all over the place. And the flyer didn't work. And yeah. the Bucks really just took – a simple flyer on Baker Mayfield. They didn't really take a flyer. Like they, he's getting paid for. Sam Darnold is getting paid more money this year than Baker Mayfield. You're right. It wasn't even a flyer. It was really just like the end of musical chairs. It was just like we're not going to bother investing in yeah. quarterback this year. Yeah, we know that we're in you know a cap situation. We're just he's our bridge quarterback. He's a he's a starting caliber quarterback, and here they are on the verge of making the playoffs. So I was finally right two and a half years later mm. after you know three other stops or whatever it was. Uh, but yeah, it's been an impressive year for Mayfield. They're already talking about what it looks like to bring him back if it's a Geno Smith like, you know, mid level contract, but um, impressive last few weeks here for Baker and the Bucks.